Gani Fawahimi, uh, my boss, uh, uh, was a, an enigma in the conundrum of flesh. One of the foremost sharpshooters in our country, uh, who says it as it is, who does not mind who else is God, uh, who will take a position on any issue, no matter who is involved. Uh, he will shout from the rooftop, he, will, he was ready to spend himself and everything he had to defend whatever I believed in. He was a great man of uh, great conscience and uh, a true friend of the masses and the oppressed and the repressed people of Nigeria. For Ghani, uh, the issue was not about his comfort. The issue was not about itself. The issue is about that necessary sacrifices required, you see, for him to contribute his own quota, which was significant. You see, to the social economic transformation of Nigeria, and which informed his denier, you see, of certain official recognitions. Because, for instance, as a legal person, uh, he did not become the senior advocate, not because he didn't merit it as at the time uh, he was not given. He didn't become because of the position he took against the Nigerian establishment. He was deeply spiritual. Someone who firmly believes that if one has the fear of God, then one will do things right. It's, it's indescribable. It's an icon, a human rights activist of international, uh, on parallel uh, standards, a, 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 a writer, a defender of the masses, courageous, Standing alone, standing for alone, for all what is right, even if he's standing alone. Looking at Ghani Fawen, I definitely would want to see Ghani as a man uh, of many faces. Ghani was extraordinary, he was so unique. Ghani was exemplary. Ghani never held personal grudge against anybody. Ghani wanted a, a, a change in the system. Ghani wanted equity within human being, regardless of where you come from, regardless of your class, whether you are rich or poor, an Igbo man, a Yoruba man, a Usa man, be a Briton, be an American, Ghani is there for you. All he wants within human you know, race is that, let there be equity, let there be social justice. And he displayed this, you see him clearly, on issues that even had to do with people that have strained relationship with him one way or the other, because of him being against them at one time or the other, whenever they met out, uh, met out injustice to another person, Ghani would stand for them where their own issues or their own rights have been translated upon. It tells you that it doesn't really, he's not so much bothered about the fact who you are. What he is interested in is, if this is done to me, I won't take it. An enviable phenomenon, a very, very enviable phenomenon. Um, it's actually a chapter in the entire annals of the Nigerian history. But he was able, through dint of hard work, determination, courage, perseverance, passion, to be able, in one fair soup, to redirect the attention of the world against organized dictatorship, be it within the ranks of the military or within the fold of autocratic. Ghani is a household name in Nigeria and internationally. And this is basically because of his contribution to the welfare of the masses mainly. Uh, I personally honestly find it difficult to uh, always refer to Ghani in the past tense. Because as far as I'm concerned, most of the legacies that he left behind are still living. And to that extent, I want to believe that the man is still living. And uh, why I also, apart from the general contribution, took particular interest in leadership Ghani me is simply because I am equally a beneficiary of his largesse. For example, I had the opportunity of doing my intern, uh, internship with uh, the chamber. And also, I remember that uh, the first set of law report that I ever got in my life were given to me or donated by Chief Leadership Ghani Fahimi. And secondly, also, he also imbibed in us a lot of virtues, such as honesty, dedication, uh, courage, 
and stand it up always for whatever that is right. When he was an all-encompassing individual, he was a man who loved the people, he was selfless, he was appreciative of the needs of people. That's why the fact that he wasn't given the opportunity to provide, that's by being elected president when he ran. Um, as a son, I saw a lot of virtues which I imbibed, and some of these virtues I would like to share with the younger generation. Some city protest was a success, no doubt, tremendously, and I enveloped the whole country. But if Ghani was alive, it would have been volatile. It impacted on so many people to the extent that some people now have propounded a theory called the Fawaniism. And in Fawaniism, you have a lot of uh, people's oriented uh, ideology that are in it and that tend towards protecting the rights of the common man on the street and providing for all and guaranteeing freedom uh, to all. So to that level, Ghana has I mean, impacted on so many people, just as you have people that will call themselves Trotskites, some will say they are Marxist, some will say they are Kami, I mean, I mean, all forms of, of different ideologies, of course, are attracted to different people who believe in their way of life and, and what they stood for. But for us, in this corner of the world, Ghani stood for everybody, stood for the less privileged, stood for the privileged, as long as your right is protected. Destabilize, dogged, determined, and also honest, a lover of humanity, somebody who believes that every Nigerian and every human being is equal to each other. Somebody who has shown love to every diverse society in this country. He has worked so hard with what he earned, and even in his death, he is still giving to the poor. That is the simplest description of late Chief Abdel Ghaniu Fawehimi. So many things. To start with, if there is anything that the government has done wrong, we usually go to court to challenge it. And then we see it to the Supreme Court. Now, there is nobody fighting for the masses. And I'm not a lawyer. I cannot do it. Mohammed, his first son, is doing the little bit he can, but he cannot do more than he's doing because of his condition. I want the other human rights activists to join him. The first day I met Chief, one of the greatest comrades in Nigeria, the first day I met him in 85, he told me that those who are oppressed always have something in common. When the people are oppressed, they have corruption in common. They have hunger in common with Nigeria. With Togolese, with Ghanaian, with Gabonese, with Cameroonian, with Chadians. They have many things in common. That Ghanifa we mean, though mortally we can say that he's dead, but we know Ghani lives on. All what Ghanifa we mean fought for years ago with fellow Nikulapo when they were talking about corruption, about bad governance, about our country going into dive and you can see Ghani is an example of a Nigerian revolutionary who defined clearly uh, what his mission in life should be so and it's rare you see to find uh, people with that kind of commitment the kind of convictions. I think he's to continue to do those things that Ghani, Ghani would have done if he were, if he were here. Uh, for Ghani I mean, you don't need to, to name anything after him. He doesn't need any monuments. His name, Ghani I mean, is big, a monument, monu, everlasting monument. So the way to immortalize him is to continue to insist on those issues that he was pushing, that Nigerians, there must be quality uh, of citizens before the law. Nigeria must go on by the rules of law, not the rules of thumb the right of the citizen must be respected and that we must abolish poverty in the lives of our people and that we have enough resources to take care of the needs of our people we cannot have enough resources to take care of the greed of the few who have taken levers of power i think it is by pushing on those issues to logical conclusions that ghana can best be mortalized today ghana is not remembered for the houses he built though he built some edifices Nobody remembers him for the car he rode, or cars he rode in. He was a simple man. Ghani is remembered today for the lies he touched and 
for caring about the less privileged in the society is spent and was spent for what he believed in. Such people don't die. They live on in the lives and the hearts of those they touched. So I believe Ghani lives forever. But I really think that the only befitting memorial we can pay to this uh, icon of all times is for us to imbibe the virtues that Ghani lived and died for. He was for abolition of poverty, and that was why he went all out to form National Conscience Party. And Ghani kept on saying that Nigeria, even while it was around, it's like a volcano that will erupt. Four years after Ghani's exit, Nigeria is still like a volcano that will erupt. It's true there are so many activists in Nigeria, but Ghani was in a class of his own because he fought like a bulldog. Uh, Christians talk of bulldog faith. When a bulldog latches onto your ankle or on anywhere, it would not let go. Uh, Ghani never did his cases like abandoned projects, uh, little fire here, little fire there. He used concentration, concentration as a secret of strength, like a laser beam. Once he, is, once he was persuaded that a matter was worth fighting for, he would put everything in, his resources, his time, his energy, uh, until he would see that particular issue to his logical conclusion. Um, God blessed him and he didn't need to go raising money here and there to do what he believed in and he spent a large chunk of his resources to fight for social justice in Nigeria. That's, that's the difference between those who start NGOs as a means of livelihood.